Welcome to Edinburgh for the festival, Edinburgh Festival 2022, which is the 75th year of the festival, which as you can see from the sign has been bringing together uh, world cultures and it was created to do that after the Second World War. So the whole city is full of the signage, advertising what's on and what dates they are and that you're able to pick up catalogues everywhere for what's going on. Everyone and their dog is excited to get there, can't wait. And here's the sign on Princess Street. It has changed from its usual to the start of the rolling wheels of all those luggages coming along because along Princess Street is the trams and also Waverley Station where a lot of people arrive at the city. The castle itself is also with, in the middle of the city with Princess Street and the gardens that are famous but the castle is hiding behind the tree at the moment. Here is the scene at the National Gallery, the building beyond in the yellow stone. The one in front in the lighter stone is the RSA which is where the current Impressionism exhibition is. That's old signage, it's an old video from before. This is a current signage advertising the Impressionist exhibition, which is titled A Taste for Impressionism, Modern French Art from Millet to Matisse, and it's running until the 13th of November. It's open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now there are two floors on the RSA, and downstairs is an exhibition by Leon Morocco, and that is wonderful, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to make a separate video about it. But we're going in to go upstairs off the noise and the background of Princess Street and the busy traffic. As you can see, the building is near a main thoroughfare and we're going to turn around and go in the main door. As with all old buildings, it's worth looking up to admire the details. Once we're in and we've paid for our tickets, the first room is a projection of curators and various art experts explaining about the exhibition and how it's showing the acquirement by Scottish people of the paintings, the Impressionists, and how they've come to be in the National Gallery. It's a really good presentation and it has a little detail on the screen as you look bottom right, there's a little bar showing the progress, which is wonderful because when you normally are watching um, a video present presentation in a, a gallery it tends to be no idea where you are in the presentation and how soon it's going to end. So in this room as you can see there is an expanded wall sized version of a painting which we'll see later on at the Monet. Facing it on our left is another picture in a different colourway also large and this is such a wonderful room you get dark walls and yet a sense of the original architecture whereas in many exhibitions I've been to the video presentations are run in a room that's got black dusty curtains or else it's a white faceless cube. Here in the exhibition there are bold colours for the walls and these set off the paintings absolutely beautifully. You can see through to the yellow room which seem to somehow attract all the pictures that I most liked and on the right there's a very vivid green but all these colours do work exceptionally well with the pictures that are in that space and I, I love what the curators have done I think they've chosen excellently. Amazing that they have managed to have an exhibition because normally exhibitions are a couple of years to plan and we've had Covid so it's been impossible to organise borrowings so they've made an exhibition based on what they currently hold and how it came into their possession, which is very appropriate. On the other hand, I went to this exhibition with a recent arts graduate who disliked the fact that it seemed to be, to him, all about money, that it talked about who had owned the pictures, how much they cost so many years ago, and he felt that was more about the art as being a thing bought and sold rather than about the artists and how they made the art. Interestingly, I'm looking at this particular Modigliani, I noticed that it was owned by Sir Alexander Corda, the film director, and that made me wonder how many other art pieces have been owned and sparked for other works of art or been linked with people who were working across different art forms. 
because the whole festival is covering all the art forms. You have got the Edinburgh International Film Festival, you've got the Art Festival, you've got the Literature Festival, and how great would it be if we had an art collection one year in the festival that related to the other works of art made by the same people who'd owned the art or made the art or been a sitter for the art, maybe in sets of portraits. There's lots of lovely links that could be placed together. One of the most exciting pieces of art in this exhibition is on the right here and that is a brand new self-portrait done by Van Gogh. It's not actually brand new but it's been hiding at the back of the, fo of the picture on the left. So on the right you're seeing they were able to find out using x-rays that there was a picture on the back painted by him and very cleverly they have shown it in the exhibition as a visual display. It's not actually on paper, it's like a little television screen that's projected and it looks kind of ghostly. I wonder if it's an interesting example for painting painters and painting students that yes you can reuse a canvas whenever you're a bit struck for cash and in fact Van Gogh is not the only one there's also a picture by Monet and it's the picture that we saw right at the start blown up and enlarged uh, for the video display and the story of who owned it is alongside and it was actually owned by shipping magnate and possibly you wonder if he bought it because it is a picture of ships but Monet had actually taken a canvas which had been a still life with a jug. So I'm grateful to the wall text for letting me know that. At the ticket desk you could also purchase an audio guide which I used but they tended to be quite heavy objects hanging around your neck with the lanyard and it was just a bit cumbersome. I would love in future an audio guide which is downloadable to your phone that you pay for and then you can walk around with your own headphones which is also more hygienic at these times. Perhaps incorporating other things from the festival maybe a piece of music or something else. For those of us who've been fans of Impressionism for quite a while and we feel we've seen a lot, this exhibition offers us new information about people who collected the art and who were very knowledgeable about it. For example, Rachel Beer was a totally new name to me and she was an important editor in an English newspaper and key for collecting. Also, there was space for people that I hadn't heard of before, Charles Marie Dulac and other people. So you were getting to see some lesser known impressionists. The whole thing of the exhibition though is the joy of looking and the art of looking and having space to do that. And the wonderful thing about art galleries is it's one of the few places nowadays you can go to, it's fairly quiet and you're allowed to have your own thoughts and not have music pumped at you or somebody telling you to buy bye bye every other moment. The other joy is discovery, looking at one picture, for example this Edouard Vuillard, the open window, and finding it reminds you of something else. In my case it was the painter Anne Redpath, who is a Scottish painter. The other joy is the texture, is that when you go to an exhibition you can look sideways on at something you love. This is the Vincent Olive Groves from the side and it's not just the texture of the frame but the actual strokes on the picture because of course he painted very much in pasta with very thick oil and you can't get that out of looking at an art book. You need to go stand in front of the picture, see the scale of it which again you lose if you look in a book and look sideways. This picture is one you need to see and stand in front of and think those are not real fruit. I can't just reach my hand and that's Fantan Latour. Amazing. So, so lifelike. And the other thing is you can see details in pictures. For example, this is from a real painting which looked to me a bit like nail varnish. It just shimmered and I took a close-up picture just so I could get it fixed in my mind. How did he get that effect? And just the sense of want, want being able to walk around a room and 3D as well. This is a sculpture by Matisse which is quite unusual. He normally was painting on flat surfaces and his is the last room in the exhibition. First you pass along a little area of painted fabric and through it you can see that something's going on behind it 
and as you walk, you begin to realize what it is. The final room is given over to pictures taken from a very special book produced by Matisse based on his cutouts made the, towards the end of his life. He wrote a book which is called Jazz and alongside it he had figures as circus performers and so forth but also in his own handwriting he has written his own thoughts on life and on art and on making art and these are there in French alongside. Now, unfortunately they're not actually translated. The wall text is, is the explanation of what is there but it's not translating those words in French and left. And at least school French came in handy for me there. But he's mentioning even terms like simultané, which is makes me think about simultaneity, which was another whole movement of art. And he's aware, seems to be bringing this into his own awareness of art in what he's writing. So I think the knowing these words are critical to getting the most out of this book. And how lovely it was at this international festival to once again hear accents. <laughs> One of the delightful things about visiting a gallery are the people. Seeing little groups of people together, chatting, discussing. I saw a couple of friends going around and that was just amazing to me. They could see that so much enjoyment was being doubled by the discussing of what they were seeing. And also the staff were so friendly, so welcoming and some of them just walked around with a sort of mild smile of, yes, isn't it wonderful? So that all adds to the enjoyment. There's a saying in Scotland, hasty back. The, this exhibition is inviting you to return. <laughs>